Hey, where are you right now? I've been sleeping at home. Sleeping at home? There's no sign of my husband here. He's lying to me. The story goes back to when I was pregnant with our first child. My name is Ashley. I was finally expecting our first child in the second year of our marriage, with just one month to go until my due date. I was nine months pregnant. While excited about the birth, I could easily imagine the confusion of going through childbirth and child rearing for the first time. I had planned to go back to my parents' house this weekend to have them help me out for a while. I mentioned the idea of going back home to my husband during the stable period of my pregnancy, but I thought he had probably forgotten, so I brought it up again today. While lazily watching TV, my husband said, Going back to your parents. Oh, I think you mentioned something about that. If you're going, why not just go? I'm not going to have any trouble without you here. What the? I was taken aback by my husband's dismissive words, but I did want to start an argument, so I decided not to push back. Well, I'm going back this weekend. I'll be giving birth next month and planning to stay for a month or two afterward. So, I guess I'll be back in about three months. Please make sure the room is clean and ready for the baby. All right, all right. I would have done it anyway. Oh, and I can't see you off this weekend because I have to work. Oh, all right. I had hoped he would at least accompany me to the station, but that hope was quickly crushed. I knew he was a workaholic, often working on weekends, always seeming busy. But I wished he could spare a thought for how difficult it would be for me, heavily pregnant and carrying a lot of luggage, to navigate the train. While I understand he's busy, I do get lonely sometimes. I don't want our soon-to-be-born baby to feel lonely. Moreover, I've been feeling anxious about whether we will be able to raise our child together at this rate. It's not just my child. When did he become so cold? With these complex feelings, I started packing. Since there was still time before I went back to my parents' house, I decided to send my luggage, other than valuables, by home delivery service. I had been hoping to welcome the baby to a clean house, had cleaned from corner to corner when I started maternity leave a little early. They say women develop a nesting instinct when they become pregnant. I had prepared a baby bed and secured a space for the baby, excited about starting a new life as a family of three when I came back in two and a half months. But my sloppy husband kept dirtying the places I had cleaned. Maybe I was to blame for cleaning too early, but regardless he seemed to have not lost his sense of living alone at all. He would leave half-drunk bottles of drinks scattered around and left cardboard boxes used for packaging the stuff he bought online opened and unattended. Come to think of it, I realized I had never seen my husband cooking or cleaning since we got married. Despite my tidying up, things only got more disordered, and I started worrying about whether the house would be okay while I was away. But then again, the time of childbirth was a minute. The weekend arrived in a flash, and I headed to my parents' home. On the other hand, my husband really went to work without seeing me off. While relaxing at my parents' home, I kept in touch with my husband fairly well. We exchanged emails every day, and I would call him about once every three days. But gradually, my husband started not answering my calls more frequently. When I asked him, you haven't been picking up the phone lately. Are you busy? During the rare times I got through, he started giving vague responses like, well, yeah, or not really. You're not cheating on me, are you? I heard many men cheat when their wives are pregnant. Nah, why would I do that? It's annoying to be doubted. On the phone, my irritated husband made me feel cautious, and I quickly apologized, saying, no, sorry. It's not good for mental health to have such unnecessary worries while nurturing a precious child in my belly. I must trust my husband, I decided. Then, a few weeks later, my labor pains started. While preparing for admission to the hospital, I called my husband. I felt embarrassed to show my pained expression as I endured labor. I wanted him to be there at the moment of birth at least. Surely, my husband would also be moved by the birth of our child. The labor has started, and it usually takes about half a day for the first child to be born, so he should be able to make it if he starts now. I wanted him to be there at the moment of birth. He could even cut the umbilical cord. When I told him this, my husband let out a sigh of annoyance. Oh, what? You want me to come by train right now? Sorry, I'm tired too, so I can't. I have work tomorrow too. What? You're still talking about work even at this time? Our child is being born, you know. Is work still your priority? Shut up. There's no replacement for my job. This is the moment our child is born. It's not going to happen again. Like I said, there's no replacement for me. If I don't do it, the work won't go around. Can't you understand that? I'm cutting the call because I'm busy. 
I tried to persuade him somehow, but my words did not resonate with my husband. As I was cut off on the phone, I shed tears while enduring labor pains. Why is my husband so indifferent to our child's birth? From the moment a mother finds out she's pregnant, she puts her child first. But as a father, he was so indifferent. And so, I faced my first childbirth alone in solitude. The labor pains lasted for a full day, and a cute little boy was born the next day. Such a tiny, cute, and beloved existence. After getting discharged, my parents showered the child with love while teaching me various things about child care. By the time a month flew by, I had become adept at bathing the baby. My parents expressed their concern, saying, Are you okay with such a husband? We can't help worrying about you after we go back. Not wanting to worry them, I tried to reassure them, saying, Well, I think I can manage somehow. My health is recovering faster than I expected, so maybe it'll go back next week. Really don't push yourself. Let us know immediately if anything happens. Yes, thank you. They often say that a postpartum body is like that of someone who has been in a car accident. But thanks to hormones, my spirits were high and my body was recovering steadily. I was also getting used to taking care of the baby, so I decided to go back home a little earlier than planned. While I was being cared for at my parents' house, there was hardly any contact from my husband. Even when I sent photos and videos of our son, he didn't show much reaction. I guess a parental heart probably sprouts as one actually raises the baby and perhaps a sense of being a father wouldn't come up until he interacted with the baby. That's how I tried to keep myself going with that thought. I decided to have my parents drop me off at home. I didn't tell my husband that I was coming home, but he should be at home since it's his day off today. I wondered what his reaction would be when he saw our child for the first time. Would my child like our home? After a few hours' drive, we arrived home. I carried my son while my parents lugged their luggage, and I unlocked the door. But what welcomed us was a dark and silent room. We're home a bit early, but we're back. Hey, no one's here. Oh, what is this smell? Entering the living room, a foul odor hit our nostrils. Turning on the light revealed a sight I hadn't imagined. The room was in a state of disarray, reminiscent of a garbage dump. Dirty dishes and half-eaten pizza were stuffed in the sink. Clothes and food and drink trash were scattered about. Half-drunk juice had mold floating in it, emitting a strong odor. The table was covered in stains and dirt. The shower room and sink were filled with black mold. The toilet was dirty and stunk. And in the crib we had prepared for our son, there were piled up unused cardboard boxes and garbage bags. I had told him to keep it clean for welcoming our son, but the reality was far from clean, and I was shocked. There's no way we can live in such a dirty house. Above all, I was most upset about the crib being soiled. Hey, isn't this too much? What's going on? There's no way we can raise a baby in a place like this. My parents were furious and searched for my husband, opening each room. But my husband was nowhere to be found. Where could he be on his day off? Another weekend shift, perhaps? But we don't even know if his previous shifts were true. He's not on a commission basis, so working on the weekend doesn't increase his salary, and his company is supposed to follow the calendar. I had honestly been dubbing him always disappearing on the weekends. Let's try calling him, I suggested. There was no way we could stand in such a cluttered room anymore, so I evacuated my bewildered parents outside for a moment and called my husband, but he didn't answer. Finally, on the third try, he picked up. Hey, where are you now? I was sleeping at home. Why? At home? We had searched the whole house, but neither my parents nor I had seen my husband. Could he possibly be buried in a mountain of trash? but we couldn't feel any human presence and his tone didn't sound like he had just woken up. Then, I heard a woman's voice over the phone. I couldn't make out what she was saying, but it was definitely a woman's voice. At that moment, I realized everything. This man, he's cheating on me. I can't believe he would cheat on me while neglecting our child. The house was a mess while we were gone. He was cheating on me, and I was furious. A father like this is unnecessary for our son. I'm fed up with a husband like this. If he likes the other woman so much, then I'll let him have her. How can you live in such a messy, rotting, smelling house? Oh, I get it. Maybe a burglar came in. I need to report this to the police. Huh? You're at your parents' house, right? What are you talking about all of a sudden? My anger escalated at my confrontational husband, and I raised my voice. You're the one lying about being at home, aren't you? Stop playing dumb. It's absolutely unacceptable to turn the crib into a garbage dump. I'm not coming back to this house. We're getting a divorce. I said this rapidly and hung up the phone. 
After that, I actually reported to the police that we were victims of a burglary to punish my husband. I told my parents and son to go back to my parents' house first, and I waited for my husband in front of the house. The police arrived before my husband did. I invited them into the house as if I were welcoming guests, and soon after, I saw my husband coming this way. Unbelievably, there was a woman walking alongside him. My husband approached me with a face that seemed to say, This is bad. Hey, you, you weren't supposed to be back until next month. But who is she? The woman standing next to him was glaring at me, arms crossed. And who are you, for that matter? What? In spite of running into his mistress, I felt strangely calm. I decided to ask the woman some questions. As it turned out, my husband had been meeting her while concealing the fact that he was married. I was so disgusted with my husband that I didn't know how to react anymore. Hey, at least hear me out. My husband tried to grab my shoulder in a fluster, but I slapped his hand away, not wanting him to touch me. Don't touch me, it's repulsive. The police are checking the room right now. I hope you feel embarrassed having them scrutinize the mess you've made. I'm leaving now. You can explain to the police. Goodbye. Leaving them with a parting shot, I headed back to my parents' house, leaving my husband and the woman in a daze. There were numerous calls from him, but of course, I did not answer. I finally decided to respond that night. Apparently, he had explained the situation to the police and returned home with a troubled look. The police, pinching their noses against the foul smell and struggling to move around the room, must have been quite embarrassing for him, but he brought it upon himself. After being dumped by the woman he had been lying to, all that was left for my husband was his shame and a house in shambles. Come on, I'm sorry. Come back. I've been looking forward to seeing our son. If he truly felt sorry, he should have at least come to my parents' house, thinking that he could apologize over the phone and everything would be fine show what a terrible person he was. Even though you never showed any interest before, you suddenly care. You weren't even there when I gave birth, despite me asking you to come several times. Well, I thought you knew that I would. I'll clean up the room. I can't do household chores without you. I need you. I could imagine my husband getting more desperate and breathless on the other end of the line as I continued to reject him. No matter how much you beg, it's not happening. You should have kept that woman. If you can't handle housework, have her do it for you. But that was just a fling. It was a momentary lapse. You're the only one for me, Ashley. A fling? Weren't you seeing her every time you said you had to work overtime? Well, that's a different, uh... I pressed my husband, who was mumbling incoherently, and he confessed that he had been cheating on me with multiple women from his high school that he had reconnected with at a friend's wedding party. He's a scumbag either way. There's no point in talking. I started to feel chills listening to my husband desperately apologizing in a voice close to tears. I can't believe it. You disgust me. Were you planning to touch our son with those hands? Unthinkable. I won't do it again. I'll come to pick you up right now. I want to see you and our son. I'll prove my sincerity. Let's go home together. I couldn't believe what I was hearing from my husband's defiant voice. What is he thinking at this point? I can't trust you. There's nothing more to talk about. I'll raise our son on my own. Ashley, please forgive. I hung up without hearing the rest of his words. The sound of the call ending echoed emptily in my ear. And so our short marital life came to an end. Half a year has passed since then and I decided to start working, relying on my parents. Once I've saved up enough money, I intend to leave my parents' house and start living on my own with my son. I'm in the midst of divorce negotiations with my husband, mainly for the sake of alimony. Having limited experience living alone, my husband is apparently unable to manage household chores, and most of his meals are from dining out, leaving the house in disarray. However, that's no longer my concern. I will do my best, expressing my abundant love for my son.